the 9M14 Mayutka on English, little one, NATO reporting name AT3 Sagar, is a manual command to line of sight wire guided anti tank guided missile system developed in the Soviet Union. It was the first man portable anti tank guided missile of the Soviet Union and it's probably the most widely produced ATGM of all time. In addition, copies of the missile have been manufactured under various names by at least five countries. Development began in uh, July 1961 with the government assigning the project to two design teams, Tula and Kolomna. The requirements were vehicle montable or man portable, range of 3000 meters, armor penetration of 200 millimeters at 60 degrees, maximum weight of 10 kilograms. The design were based on the Western ATGMs of 1960s, such as French Antac and Swiss Cobra. In the end, the prototype developed by the Kolomna Machine Design Bureau, who were also responsible for AT-1 Snapper, was chosen. Initial tests were completed by December 20, 1962, and the missile was accepted for service in a September 16, 1963. The system itself consists of the multiple packages. The first package is the 9S415 device that uses by the operator to guide the missile itself, while the other packages are the portable 9P111 launchers with the 9M14M basic missiles or some others depending on the target. Today, missile can be fired from the portable suitcase launcher, ground vehicles and helicopters. Before the launch of the missile, it is necessary to make certain preparation on the entire system to bring it into operational use. After the occupancy of the position for action, it is necessary to insert battery into the bay of the control device. Then. The battery power is checked by pressing on the power control key. Then the carrier of the periscope is lifted in the battle position and the periscope used for aim is placed on it. Four targets under 1000 meters. The operator can guide the missile by eye. Four targets beyond this range. The operator uses the 8x power 22.5 degree field of view periscope sight. After that, the joystick is vertically pulled out from the march to the combat position and then the periscope should be adjusted and directed toward the desired target. During this time, the operator's assistant prepares the launcher boxes by placing them by directing to a certain point of action and adding wires to the operator who connect them with the device. Up to four launch ramps can be attached to one device, but only one by one missile can be launched. Launcher switch to the right of the joystick used for selection of the desired missile which should be fired at the target. The missile is guided to the target by a small joystick which requires intensive training of the operator. The operator's adjustments are transmitted to the missile by wire that trails behind the missile. The missile climbs into the air immediately after launch, which prevents it from hitting obstacles or the ground. In flight, the missile spins at 8.5 revolutions per second. It is initially spun by booster and the spin is maintained by the slight angle of the wings. The missile uses a small gyroscope to orient itself relative to the ground. As the result, the missile can take some time to bring back in line with the target, which gives it a minimum range of between 500 and 800 meters. While early estimates of the missile hitting the target ranged from 60 to 90%, experience 
has shown that it can drop to an efficiency between 2 and 25% in case of less than optimal conditions and lack of skill from the operator. In fact, missile requires considerable skill from the operator. According to some source, it takes 2,300 simulated firings to become proficient with the missile as well as 50 to 60 simulated firings a week to maintain the skill level. Nevertheless, the weapon has always been quite popular with its operators and has enjoyed a constant updating effort both in the Soviet Union and other countries. During the Vietnam War, the North Vietnamese Army used Sagar in anti-tank operations where a significant number of South Vietnamese tanks M48 Patton and M113 combat vehicles were destroyed. During these attacks, the South Vietnamese were confused and surprised by the slow and uneven flight of the missile, but through the experience they soon implemented a countermeasure against this system. After the launch from the enemy, the South Vietnamese would open fire from their weapons to the position of Sagar operator, which would force him to leave control of his missile. The missile was used too by Arab armies during the initial phases of the Yom Kippur War. Later in the war, the Israelis adopt new tactics and learn how to neutralize the Sagar threat by employing large concentration of artillery fire to either distract or kill the Sagar operators. Other improvised methods used by Israelis to defeat the Sagars involved firing in front of the tank to create dust, moving back and forth and firing at the source of Sagar. These Israeli tactics were later adopted by NATO forces to counter the threat posted by Warsaw Pact ATGMs. In total, during the war, Sagars knock out more than 800 Israeli tanks and other combat and non-combat vehicles. In Afghanistan, Sagar was not much used, but he had bright moments. Mujahideens mostly used handheld rocket launchers RPGs because they were easier to handle, and the configuration of terrain itself generally requires close combat. During the war in Yugoslavia, just like in Libya and Syria, Sagar was used by all sides. Its use was multipurpose because it was operated on moving and stationary targets. There was no target for which Sagar could not be used. In Serbia, according to license purchased by the former USSR since 1973, the anti-tank missile launchers is manufactured in a factory Krušik in city of Valjevo in two basic variants 9M14M with a manual guidance and 9M14P1 with a semi-automatic guidance. The mechanized infantry has two launchers on infantry combat vehicles BVP M80A. The both family of combat vehicles were used as a platform M83 with a turret with a six semi-active missiles 9M14P1. The Sagar can be used from the helicopter Gazelle which is armed with the four missiles placed on the side carriers. The missiles with 2M, 2T and 2F markers are being developed on the basis of the Sagar. The 2M model has a heat warhead and has an improved penetration capability. The 2T model has so-called tandem cumulative warhead 
and is designed to pierce combat tanks and other armored vehicles. The tandem warhead is designed to break through the reactive armor of modern tanks. Actually, the first warhead only serves to re activate reactive armor, while the second pierces the main armor of the tank. Model 2F have a high explosive warhead and it's made to demolish unfortified objects as well as killing hostile living forces in the shelter. Also, the two T5 missiles are being developed, which is creators called big because it is larger than previous. This missile have a greater range and will, unlike others, use both classic, optoelectronic and radio guidance. In the name of this missile, number two notes the modification of the missile. The letter T notes tandem warhead, while the number 5 notes the range of 5 kilometers. The plan is to integrate these missiles both on armored vehicles, both 1, infantry combat vehicles, BVP and helicopter gazelle.